Hi, it's Kane Hodder, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're watching Slash and Cast. Keep watching, or I'll kill you and your whole family. What's going on, horror fans? Welcome back to another episode of Slash and Cast. My name is Riley, that is Nick, and before we get things started, as I'm sure a lot of you guys knew, we just did an entire giveaway through Gleam.io, which was for two copies of Friday the 13th and a PS4, which comes with a copy of Friday the 13th. Right now, we're going to announce those winners, so goddamn drum roll, please. Thank you. All right, that's enough. That's enough. We're not doing drum rolls here. <laughs> okay, so the runner's up. We have two runners up, which was for just the F13 copy of the game, which, by the way, can be a physical copy. We'll email you. Get those details later. First runner up, coming in third here, is Bob Newhouse. Congratulations to you, Bob. We will be in contact with you and our second runner-up with another copy of Friday the 13th. The game is Mimi Bianchi. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but regardless, you did get yourself a copy of Friday the 13th, the game. And our grand prize winner, this is the real drum roll. Don't do it! The real, the grand prize winner for the PS4 and a copy of Friday the 13th, the game is R. Hernan Gomez. Congratulations, my friend. Now, uh, we will be in touch emailing all of you guys. If we do not get responses, within 72 hours, we'll do a redrawing. But goddamn, congratulations to you guys. There were nearly 12,000 entries. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. And keep in mind, this giveaway was for 13,000 subscribers. Yeah. We hit 16,000 as of this morning. So, well, actually, as of yesterday morning when you're watching this. So, goddamn, thank you, guys. You're awesome. Thank you so much for all the support. My lord. Let's move on. <laughs> you can uh, join our Discord server. We have our own Discord server. You know, it's a great place to find all of our content, especially when we go live. And it's a home to our movie nights. Our movie nights are exclusive to people in our Discord. Uh, we have a pre-show and intermissions that include drive-in-like elements. Uh, you know, throwback. Uh, really cool. It is cool. Yeah, really cool. Uh, last week, it was The Evil Dead. Yeah. So, Franchise. Yep. And then, you know, it's cool. If, if you stick around, you get through all those movies and you want to watch another one, a lot of times I'll put on another movie. Right. Okay? That's why we actually, after we watched Evil Dead, we watched Whiplash, which was awesome. Love Whiplash. Great movie. Yeah. So make sure, <laughs> you know, you join our Discord server. Link in the description uh, to be a part of Movie Nights. Uh, you can also, you know, vote on which, you know, movies or themes you want to uh, see in yeah. the next movie night. And we always take suggestions, too. So yes. you're welcome to be a part of that. I'm just telling you what is going to happen. All right, let's jump into our first line of news, which I'm sure you guys are already guessing. Friday the 13th, the game. Now, they tweeted out this, this mysterious picture, okay? It was simple. It was seven black dots and one blue dot on what it looked like just like a crinkled up piece of paper. I, You know, I did a video on this, okay? Uh, I broke down some theories, so if, if you haven't seen that already... Check it out. Uh, we're going to discuss it here. Now, it's been a week to really go over it. Not a week, but a few days, obviously, to go over it. And, you know, theories are everywhere for this thing. Everywhere. All right? People are thinking, well, maybe there's something hidden behind it. Nah, no, there's not. I, I went, you know, I brought in a Photoshop. I broke down all the curves. Um, you know, and things were quieting down. And then Ilfana tweeted it out yesterday for really no reason. It was just kind of random. It was like, oh, just in case you forgot, here's this picture again. It was the exact same thing. I took yeah. that in Photoshop, too, and put them side by side. It's the same fucking thing. So... That caused more confusion. You know, everyone's screaming Roy. And, you know, I did too. I did too when it, like, uh, it first came out. Yeah, of all the colors to pick for, from for that last dot, they pick that, you know, lightish blue. Which straight up, it matches, man. Yeah. Like, it does. Uh, so I understand why. Because we know we have seven Jasons in the game. Currently, it makes sense. You know, there's eight dots. That new dot that's a different color is a new Jason. That makes sense. I totally understand that. Um, looking back on it, readdressing it now, I don't think it's Roy. Okay? I'm going to be honest with you. After going back and looking at it, it doesn't make sense that Roy would be the first Jason to come into the game. I do think at some point we'll see a Roy. I do. I think Part 5 Jason will make it into the game at some point. If they, But it's the first Jason to come into the game is bound to be Jason X. Right. It, it really is. It, it got fourth. It just fell uh, lost on the list yeah. uh, when um, for the fan vote. Yeah, so I don't understand why they wouldn't do that. Now, I, you know, once again, nothing confirmed here. I have no idea. But like, it just, to me, it doesn't make sense for it to be Roy. Not at this time, especially going in, like, this is big. Going into October, 
your fall season. You need a big jump right here with the last year beta coming. Jason X can give you that jump. It really can. Part five is just going to cause a little bit of outrage. So, you know, this pitcher has, there's been an uproar. I mean, not so much like angry at gun media, but just like, damn, what is going on? What's coming? Yeah, no explanation. You know, people are saying it could be Pamela because uh-huh. of her blue sweater. You know, I don't know. It's totally great, but whatever. Yeah. You want to <laughs> check out our video on uh, why Pamela will never be in the game. Uh, quotes from gun media on that. Yeah. So I'm thinking it has something to do with counselors, maybe a new counselor or something like that. A new Jason doesn't make sense to me, not for what it is, at least not Roy. Right. So, I don't know. I have no idea. That's just my opinion. Right. And um, before, you know, you comment and say, oh, Roy can't be in the game, he's human, he'd get, die by the car. One, um, it's a video game. Yeah. They can based, do whatever the hell they want. Based off of two, a movie. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and three, you know, you don't want someone from inside the movies, but you are okay with a completely made-up Savini design Jason, uh-huh. you know? You know, it's a video game. Yeah, if and Roy's Roy, in, yeah. if he's the antagonist, he's gonna have all the same powers that everyone else. does. Yeah, I'm sure. But he, I mean, Roy was a badass. To be fair, true. Roy, Roy did some cool shit. Like true. he went through a door, like uh, more powerful than a lot of the Jasons did. If I may point out, he had some of the most brutal kills, and he practically had a teleportability himself. Like that dude was everywhere. So I mean, Roy was supernatural in his own right, I guess. But you know, if we see him, I'm I'm okay if he plays the same way. That's yeah. totally fine with me. He's Whatever. Dumb. We'll get past it. It's okay. All right. But there's your Friday 13th of game news. Make sure you check out our videos that actually broke that down by itself. Whew. All right. With that, let's go ahead and move on to our next line of news. What I'm super excited about, the Kane Hunter documentary. We've been going over it for a while, and now the final touches are finally being put together by Masterfully Macabre Entertainment for their latest documentary, To Hell and Back, The Kane Hunter Story. This is an in-depth biographical documentary on the man himself, Kane Hunter. As you can see, we're big fans, okay? Always have been. As you can see with our intro, we're big fans, okay? So, now it features interviews with some major cinema legends, including Bruce Campbell, Robert England, and Cassandra Peterson. Now it's getting closer and closer to its premiere. So, getting ready for it, a new theatrical trailer has dropped, and we're going to take a look at it right now. It's awesome. Let's take a look at the new trailer for To Hell and Back, The Kane Hotter Story. Here we go. I've murdered more people on film than any actor in history. Kane played Jason, and Jason is a huge character. The hockey mask, the way he moves, his bulk, all of that is the logo. You meet a lot of these people who play heroes and people who play bad guys. Most of the people that I've met who play heroes are assholes, and most of the people who play really bad people are nice guys. And go through what he's gone through, I can't even imagine. I talked to this reporter, and she said, let's do a story about the local kid that's making his way in the stunt business. You know, I'll give you some pictures, and if you want, I'll do a fire stunt for you live. He put his arm out away from himself to be safe, and when he lit the match, he ignited. Completely burst into flames everywhere. And it's a, it's a horrifying story, because it's bad enough, you know, being burnt, obviously, but all the other things that went wrong, I mean, just, it couldn't have been worse. If I read it in a book, I would read it and say, that can't all be true. He's exaggerating. And unfortunately, it was. That basically started uh, the next six months of horrific torture. Can we cut for a second? All right, there it is, the new theatrical trailer for To Hell and Back, The Kane Hunter Story. Man, it looks so good. Yeah. I seriously don't think I've ever been so excited for a documentary, ever. And, you, like, it just, that story is incredible. So you should read this book, first of all, if you haven't, because I don't know how well, we don't know yet how well it's going to break it down. But, I mean, it's a great read. It really is. And, you know, you're supporting Kane himself. So, but, like, you know, there's some things in there. Like, first of all, Bruce Campbell, okay? That point he makes where, you know, bad guys, that pl- people that play bad guys in movies are always such great people. Yeah. That is the most true thing ever. Like, I'm, people that play good people, I've met, we've met a lot of celebrities, okay? A lot. And, you know, the ones that are always rude are the ones that always play good people in the movies. Mm-hmm. But those horror villains and all, like, they're great, okay? 
great. Especially, I mean, Kane's awesome. Yeah. Kane is one of the most down to earth dudes ever. You so humble. You never know how popular he really is. We just met him on the side. Yeah. Which is, I mean, believe me, I know that. Nobody even realized that's cool. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, to help him back, the Kane Hour story has been submitted to some of the most prestigious and well known film festivals around the world. Masterfully Macabre Entertainment will present both domestic and international premieres and bring the highly anticipated documentary to audiences around the world. I'm gonna get her on Blu-ray. We'll do a review on it, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm, it's gonna be great, and it's it's got an outstanding review so far all around. So, geez, you gotta check it out. To hell and back, the Kane Hunter story will make its world premiere at the upcoming Fright Fest in London, England, on August 26th. Why is it gonna be in London? You know, I want to see it. I want to be at the premiere. Okay, everything that's like cool is always so far away. Yeah, it's also on August 26th, which is you know, McGregor Mayweather. Made- just saying. True. I'll be busy. <laughs> All right. With that, let's move on to our next line of news, which is Leatherface. Now, we're late to this one. We're late to the Kane Hodder story, to be fair. Um, this this shit always drops right after we get done shooting Slash Cast. Like, I bet you money. All right. I bet you money something drops tomorrow. Like, we're shooting this on Sunday. I bet you something drops new tomorrow, but that's not the point. Okay. A prequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been taking shape for a good while now. The idea of getting to see a young Leatherface should offer all kinds of possibilities, and it, it has, obviously, coming from these trailers. The film will be titled Leatherface and to be presented as a mystery of sorts about a few teenage psychopaths that escape from a mental hospital, one of whom grows up to be the man himself. Leatherface, written by Seth M. Sherwood and steered by directors Alexandre Bustillo and Julian Mori, the movie has certainly it certainly grabbed the attention of fans worldwide. It, which it has, okay. It, I mean, it's, it's got us. We were excited for it. Trailer made us nervous. The last one made us nervous, okay. Now, with the project having wrapped last year, reshoots are finally taken care of, and a solid R rating has been given by the MPAA. A new trailer has now arrived for Leatherface, okay. So, this one is your, you know, not your Red Band trailer. This is your regular authorized trailer. Comparing that to the last trailer that we got for Leatherface, this one definitely shines tremendously, okay? Comparing it to the last trailer, yeah. in my opinion, okay? Now, yeah. because this one definitely pushed story more. I understood what the hell was going on. True. Like, the last one I had no idea. Like, it was just, it was a Red Band trailer. It was meant to push the gore elements. I understand that. I'm glad this trailer came because I'm a little more excited for it. But, like, really, it, it's still, eh. Yeah. It's still, eh. It, it's, um, I don't know. I just, we can't have another bad Leatherface movie, man. Like, this, the franchise can't afford it. There's been enough of them. And, you know, that Direct TV logo still makes me laugh. Every time. Every, <laughs> every time I still chuckle. It, really? Yeah, I don't know. There's parts of, like, those trailers that I'm like, oh, sweet, that's cool, that's cool. And then there's, like, parts I'm like, eh. I literally laughed at a couple of shots. Yeah. Like there's just some stuff that I'm not really buying into yet. I mean, we're 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 doing a Rob Zombie Halloween breaking out of the hospital, uh-huh. mental hospital yeah. thing, you know. Um I mean, but then the wheelchair out the window. I mean, that was cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <Not gonna laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And then we were talking about how Leatherface is just so big, like he's supposed to be like 400 pounds. Oh uh, yeah, he's a huge guy. But then there were a couple shots like Towards the, towards the end, where, you know, it's revealing Leatherface, he does not look 400 yeah. pounds. He had, like, completely different hair. So, I mean, w- it, w- the movie's supposed to have four different psychopaths, right? Yeah. So we don't actually know which one is Leatherface. Technically, we don't really know which one Leatherface, but the, the big dude is meant to look like him. Yeah. Like, that's who it looks like to me, but then you see other shots where it's somebody putting on skin on their face, and it does not look like him at all. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's no telling, but you will find out soon. Leatherface will have a September 21st premiere on DirecTV, exclusive DirecTV, and then will be followed by a limited theatrical release as well as a full VOD release by Lionsgate on October 20th. So you're going to be able to get your hands on it pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, if you have DirecTV, you're going to get it before others, I guess. I don't really... See, That that's really what's messing with my head. It's like, Dur- why? Why? I don't... I see... You know, Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even want to get into it. It just seems like an odd decision. Uh, but Leatherface, it de- it's looking better now. Yeah. It's looking a little bit better now. i got a little more uh, faith for it now. But it still doesn't look like it's going to be too great. I'm not going to you know, set my, my levels too high yeah. by far. So, All right, let's move into our last topic of the day, an interesting one. But one that could piss you off, too, I'm sure. The Monsters. Okay? Yeah. The Monsters. It's been, you know, five years since we really heard anything, because five years ago, the showrunner for Hannibal, uh, Brian Fuller, he penned a pilot episode. 
and it was called Mockingbird Lane. Okay. Now that project was to be loaded down with stars and contain a huge budgeted version of the Munsters. Okay. Now Brian Singer was to direct with Herman being played by Jerry O'Connell, which that's already a good name. You're already yeah. starting now. Okay. With Portia de Rosie as Lily and Eddie Izzard as Grandpa. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. Uh, as I'm sure most of you guys know, that never really came into fruition. Um, as you know, what was eventually it was eventually released as you know a Halloween special. Okay. NBC has just announced that they will be rebooting the Monsters yet again. Yet again. We're going into it. Time has a way of, you know, changing things, and SNL, Seth Meyers, and Jill Kargman will be on board with this proposed series. Okay, you know, Seth Meyers, he, he's okay. Yeah, you know? I, yeah, I guess. Well, you, see, this new take on the Monsters is to be inspired by the original series and a half-hour single-camera show that will trail the Monsters as they struggle to fit into hipster Brooklyn. Look, uh, for I actually, you know, what actually stands out to me is a single camera show. Yeah. Um, because I, Monsters was always kind of sitcommy. Yeah. Um, to a degree, and you know, I just uh, there. This is gonna be shit. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be honest with like that's what I'm just. I have such an awful gut feeling about this. I hope it's good. I love the Monsters. Yeah. Okay. So like. There's a there's a reason, even when it was star filled with Jerry O'Connell involved, that it didn't become a thing. Okay, there's, there's a reason that happened, and that's because you're playing with something so sensitive. In this generation, the monsters won't. I don't think the monsters can work in this generation. I really don't. Like the main audience for the monsters will be kids like us that have old school tastes and older audiences. Right. Like my parents still sit down and watch the monsters on Netflix yeah. all the time. So yeah, there's. Like that upper, that older audience will like it. Yeah. And it could be, unless they butcher it, which they could do. And then you're just going to piss off that older audience and you'll have nothing. See, now, <laughs> I don't know. Is this going to take place in 2017? Are we going to get a fuller house where everybody's on their cell phone? <laughs> oh my God, please don't. Dude, that would be, oh, that would be no. awful. But it says to a hipster Brooklyn. What do they mean by hipster Brooklyn? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, I, it scares the hell out of me because I, I really do care about the Monsters. If they're going to do it, I hope they do it right. I just don't see how it's going to work now. Yeah. I really, really don't. But let us know what you guys think. Do you really want to see the Monsters again? I don't I don't know. I'd rather just go back and watch the old episodes, yeah. to be honest. But that's just my opinion, and that's all it is. All right, with that, that is a wrap on Slash and Cast today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, helping us, helping us hit 16,000 subscribers. Keep her going. Love you guys. We'll have another giveaway, probably around 25K, okay? So keep growing. Keep being there with us. All right, with that, editor, roll that outro. Hey, you. Thanks for watching this episode of Slash and Cast. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and click that box right down there to check out last week's episode. Also, if you want to check out the film the fans are calling the best fan film of all time, make sure you click that box right down there to check out our Friday the 13th fan film. While you're at it, click that circle right there to subscribe to our channel never miss a video again. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>